Hey everyone, today I'd like to show you how to use SageMaker Debugger to debug a XGBoost model to predict customer churns. We will walk through the notebook in a moment. My name is Qing Wei Li. I'm a machine learning specialist. And the only reason I'm here today is my much more talented colleague, Emily Weber, who usually make those videos are not available today. She has a line of CEOs to meet and greet. Well, let's talk about uh, bugs. Uh, building and training machine learning models is a mix of science and art, right? Many issues could happen during the training process and that could prevent your model from correctly extracting and uh, learning patterns in your data set, right? Uh, you know, those failed training jobs are usually caused by bugs such as uh, inappropriate initialization of parameters or a poor combination of hyperparameters, etc. And those issues, unfortunately, are not immediately visible. And it's also very time consuming to identify and correct those bugs. One suggestion I have, do not use bug spray because bugs has families too. We need to use SageMaker Debugger. So SageMaker Debugger provide full visibility into model training by monitoring, recording, analyzing your training process, right? And um, to enable, you know, uh, SageMaker debugger, right, you need to initialize a hook, right, which attaches itself to the training process and emits data necessarily for debugging. And those data will be saved in S3. Debuggers then use a set of rules to analyze those data in a streaming fashion. So a rule here is a piece of code which encapsulates the logic for analyzing debugging data. SageMaker Debugger provides a set of built-in rules created by data scientists and engineers at uh, Amazon to identify those common problems while training machine learning models. Debugger supports major machine learning frameworks such as uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, and also the SageMaker pre-built algorithm, XGBoost. All right, let's start looking at our sample notebook. So in this notebook, right, we are going to look at a customer churn example. By the way, this notebook is adapted from another SageMaker example, which is available on our uh, SageMaker examples GitHub website. So as we know that customer churn are very expensive for business, right? So it would be great if we can use machine learning to identify customers who are about to churn, right? So this is how this model is about, right? So uh, at the beginning of this notebook, we have a bunch of uh, you know, housekeeping items such as importing uh, necessary libraries for us. Uh, the data set we have is uh, publicly available. Um, it is a data set from uh, a mobile operator. Right? We, as you can see, we can have a quick overview of the data set. We have about 3,300 rows of data with uh, 22 columns. The last column of the data is uh, telling us the churn or not churn status of the customer. We also have a bunch of information about the customer, such as the location, how long the customer has been with uh, this mobile operator, uh, the usage details, like uh, how many minutes uh, the customer use. Right? A very typical tabular data set um, we have right here. The next step I have here is uh, some data pre-processing. Uh, I just uh, followed the same steps of the original uh, customer churn data set. As you can see here, we dropped some uh, unnecessary data columns, such as the phone number, which is uh, not contributing to the churn prediction at all. Uh, we also did some embedding right, uh, as well. So at the end, we split our data into three sets. We have our training data set, validation data set, and test data set. We upload those data set to S3, right, and we start our training process. As you can see, 
we use XGBoost, which is uh, a built-in algorithm in SageMaker for our modeling. As I mentioned earlier, I'm only a mediocre machine learning specialist, so I'm very lazy. Um, I did not think carefully about the hyperparameters I need to use for this machine learning model. And I just copy and paste uh, some hyperparameters from uh, another XGBoost model I used earlier. Right? As you can tell, this is a very careless way of setting hyperparameters and it's not recommended. But you know, I did it anyway. So uh, this is how I started the training. I define my XGBoost estimator. Uh, since we only have 3,000 rows of data, it's a pretty small data set. I only use uh, one instance for the training. Well, this is where I uh, tell the estimator uh, what kind of uh, hyperparameter I'm going to use for this algorithm. And then I provide my training data set, validation data set, and start the training. So to save time, I'm not going to actually run the training process here but because it has been run uh, before, right? Uh, we can just go directly to the results. If you look at the training error and the validation error, well, it's actually not that bad, right? Um, 0.12 uh, for validation, 0 0.09 for uh, training, right? Well, so just to be safe, right? I say, well, before I turn this model over to my teammates, to my managers, maybe I can do a further validation uh, on the test data. This is where I deploy my model, right? As you can see here, deploying a model in SageMaker is super easy. I just use this one line of code said, you know, deploy, right? And that's it. And then I set, uh, you know, tr try to send the, the test data that I have, right? Uh, as you can see here, this is my test data to uh, the deployed model and I want to see how uh, the model is performing right? and I will look at the F1 score and the confusion matrix. Well, I'm glad I looked right? because uh, if you look at F1 score, the score is pretty low. We only have uh, 0.44 F1 score and if you look at the confusion matrix for the actual churn, right, we have uh, 48 of those actual turns in our testing data. And we only identify 14 out of 48, which is terribly poor. So clearly something's wrong here. Well, but from the training, right? Uh, previous training, we only get the accuracy, the errors for validation and training. We do not have any other informations, right? So that's why I think, you know, maybe I need to do it differently. So this time I'm going to use debugger in the training process. As we mentioned earlier, right, the debugger gives you the capability to identify complex issues by collecting, analyzing uh, tensors. Right? The tensors are representing the status or the states in every iteration of the training. Right? It's actually very easy to set it up. Right? So as you can see, this is uh, uh, similarly, this is how we define our estimator, right? Nothing has been changed from previous job. What we need uh, to do differently this time is we need to define a debugger hook. And this hook tells what data, what tensor we need to collect and uh, how often do we collect those uh, tensors. So as you can see, we want to collect uh, metrics and the trees generated by the XGBoost model. Uh, we want to connect those two. And at the same time, the interval for us to collect is uh, every three iterations. After that, we need to define a set of rules. As you remember earlier, those rules are predefined the logic uh, to analyze the saved tensors. You know, I just picked uh, a few rules that I think is uh, important for me to identify the problem. I picked a uh, loss not decreasing, right? So this tells me uh, if the loss function of my model is not decreasing, uh, this will alert me. Right? Similarly, we have uh, overtraining, 
overfeeding and the tree depth. Uh, as you can see, right, you can uh, add more collections right here in the debugger hook. You can also add more rules and you can also bring your own rules to debugger as well, right? So as you can see, well, now I have to retrain the model. Uh, so if I knew earlier, I probably could start the training the first time with debugger enabled, right? So this gives me the flexibility to uh, analyze the training process if needed. All right, so now let's run the training. And uh, after the training job is done, again, we are not going to wait uh, the real training process. We can just look at the results. Uh, we can see what is the job summary of this debugger job. Uh, well, if you look at here, loss not decreasing. Uh, if you look at this rule, uh, we find some issues. Uh, overtraining, well, we, we, it seems like we did not have anything wrong with uh, overtraining, right? Um, uh, no issue found. Uh, overfit, no issue found. For tree depth, yeah, we found some tr uh, issues. So that means, although in our hyperparameter, we said that the true uh, depth is uh, a higher a higher number, but in the reality, the model right have uh, built trees that did not reach that depth. Right. So now, because we have those data collected, let's try to analyze it and visualize it. So the first thing I want to do is to define a trial. Right. So what is a, a SageMaker debugger trial? So as you Recall, right, we collect those tensors, those data during the training process, and we save those in S3. So a trial is a simple way for us to load those data and for us to do analysis, right? And we create a trial uh, saying, you know, uh, based on the data that is saved in the S3 pass from our latest debugger training job. All right. We define two simple functions, one to get the data from the trial, uh, the other is just to plot uh, you know, the training error. All right. So let's look at that. Well, from validation and from training, we can see that through the 100 iterations, the training error in, you know, increased and then declined and then stayed flat. So at the minimum, we can see from this chart from this plot is that we do not need to train the rest of the 80 iterations. Maybe the number of iterations is too long, right? So now let's look at our hyperparameter because clearly right, from this debugger job, from this analysis, we could tell that maybe our hyperparameter is not setting up correctly, right? So now let's look at the hyperparameter. Well, the maximum depth is six. Uh, we use uh, gamma to be 40. Well, if you recall, right, gamma is the loss reduction required to make further partition. Right? This number probably is said to be really high because 40 is a relatively large number for the XGBoost model to make further partition. Right? So the next question we have is, well, no, we suspect that some of the hyperparameters are not correct. How? can we optimize this? How can we find the best hyperparameters for this training job? Well, SageMaker also has the automatic model tuning capability. This is also known as uh, hyperparameter tuning. It can help us find the best versions of a model by running many training jobs on your data set. Uh, and all you need to do is to provide the range of hyperparameters and the hyperparameter tuning job will be able to find the best hyperparameters that give you the best results for your training job, All right? So this is what we are going to do. I have a few hyperparameters that I have a relatively high confidence. So I will treat those as fixed hyperparameters. So, and I also added a early stopping runs to be nine. So that means if uh, the uh, loss function is not improving after nine iterations, I'm going to stop the training job. I also reduced the tree depth a little bit, right? And for those other 
for, I think, very important hyperparameters. Now I specify the range and the let hyperparameter tuning job to identify the best hyperparameter for this data set. All right. And after this is set, I start the hyperparameter tuning job. Uh, the maximum job I set is to be 80. So that means uh, at maximum 80 training jobs will be run and five of them will be running in parallel. Okay. Uh, this might take a while. As you can tell, we have uh, 80 training jobs. And after the, the hyperparameter tuning job is done, we can deploy the model. So now with the hyperparameter optimize, and let's look at uh, the F1 score and confusion matrix on the same testing data. Well, as you can tell, we almost doubled the iFriend score. And if you look at the confusion matrix, we have much better results. Uh, that's all we have for today. And thanks for your attention. Uh, to the end, please do not forget, uh, delete the endpoint to save cost. Thank you.